Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah. Whatever you celebrate, uh, happy holidays for uh, for all of you out there listening. Uh, this is the Rojo Rocket. Thank you for listening to Wissy Ginger all the way through this entire year. It's been incredible for me, man. I'm so stoked to have you guys aboard for this ride. I really do appreciate it. I want to say thank thank you because I really mean it. I'm thankful uh, for all the fans that have supported me that are going to continue to come along on this awesome journey. Starting in 2020, we got a bunch of new news. As you know, Bobby Lee and I are starting our podcast, uh, which I'm so excited about. We got the Red Rocket Tour 2020, which I'm so excited about. That's going to be incredible. Going to Edmonton in January, then Denver then uh, Minneapolis, and then Madison, and then February, March, April, May. we got a bunch of dates up at andrewsantino.com. Please subscribe to the show. Spread the word. Give it five stars. Push it around to everyone you know. We also have a Patreon uh, listed below. The Patreon is where all the solo episodes are going to live and live Q&A, plus a bunch of merch deals and all sorts of cool exclusive content you can't get anywhere else. So I'm excited to bring you these new things as well as Dis a Hat. Dude, I got merch now, man. I'm so excited to have merch because we haven't had it before. Uh, people were asking when we're going to make shirts. We have a cool shirt that's selling like crazy. The in here, we pour whiskey. That's the number one shirt I think we're selling by far. The Red Rocket hat. We have uh, Red Rocket beanie. We have a bunch of different shirts. Go to andrewsantino.com. Click on the store. You can see all the good stuff we have. Everything is in the description below for Patreon and for the store and the website. Um, and I'm so happy that you guys have, uh, have been here supporting me. I, I really do appreciate it. And for right now, enjoy the episode. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. You were that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are pugilists. You owe me five dollars for the whiskey, seventy-five dollars for the horse. Gingers are hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger, I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again. Today is Mr. Nate Bargazzi. Nate? Yes. I love your your Italian last name, Bargazzi. Yeah, you know what's funny? We did 23 and Me. Oh, shit. 0.0% Italian. <laughs> Not a even deal. a little bit? No. I might make this a joke just so you don't throw it. But yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, we'll, yeah. We'll blank this out. Uh, no, you can add just, I don't want, if someone's like, oh, this is doing material. You and your gate, wife, 23 and Me? No, I just did it. She got it for me for uh, Christmas or something in last year, and uh, that was a good present. That is you a good know? gift. Yeah, it's like a gift that you're, you know, because it's hard to buy, I think, for husbands and wives, and uh, she got me that, and we did it, and then my uncle, he's like my second cousin, <clears throat> he's older, but he, I mean, he just wasn't, he was like, well, that's wrong. He just wouldn't. He didn't believe it? Didn't believe it. Yeah. Well, she, the, my old bag did it. Uh, she did it. And I told her I wouldn't do it with her. Because I'm not going to... Yeah. I don't want to give my DNA... I don't want to give more DNA to a company I know to, nothing about. Yeah. Who are these people? But what are they going to do with it? I, I don't mean, know. But I, yeah. the idea that I don't know is like... It could be, you know, I think far down the line, you know, say in 40 years... Yeah, we could be this conversation. Like, I wish I wouldn't have done it. Yeah, because they're gonna be like, yeah, we made you. We made a bunch of yous. Yeah, we copied your DNA. We made like uh, fourteen Nates. Yeah, we're out there just killing it though. Yeah, maybe well, not all of them. Some of them were probably doing going, really bad shit. Yeah, yeah. I just think well, it's creepy to give somebody your DNA that you don't know. There's no vouch. It's not like a regulated industry, so it just creeps yeah. me out a little bit. What are they doing with it when it's over? I, my assumption is that you're, they're they have a business, right? So they're doing it for profit because you pay them. Yeah. But that can't be the only reason. Why, like, why would they really want? It's all like that? selling your when they can sell your info and stuff. Yeah, it's basically the same thing. Yeah, except you're selling your like your little li your life source. Yeah, I could see. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, it's, they already have it. So yeah, they have it. I feel like they can get anything that anybody can get anything, and you have DNA to really go is pretty tough to acquire unless they really hunt you down to try to find it. But I mean, you electively were like, here, fuck it, yeah. take it. I, said, I melted off. Yeah. <laughs> I paid. I paid you them. You paid to them to have it. more information. Yeah. Your wife did it too? No. No, so she she's, just gave it she's to you. She's like, a little like you. I don't think. Uh, Conspiracy? Yeah, like loves the idea of people having your stuff. I just, you know, I mean, look, if I murder someone, then I'll be pretty upset that I did it. Do, but, would you ever murder somebody, you think? I don't think so. I, I mean, I just don't see where the reason would come up, but, you know, I'm not to say. You're never, not going to count Never it say out. never. Yeah, don't know? count it out. 
Don't count it out. Don't yeah. count. Never say never. Uh, Justin Bieber. Never say never. Never dude. say never. Maybe Favorite you artist. do murder someone. I think I think there's a reason to murder people. Don't you think, you think somebody pisses you off enough in your life where you think maybe I just got to take care of this person? Yeah, I mean, if they do something to you know someone in your family, I uh, I always think like, how many people do you, you think like your neighborhood? You think you have any, anybody remotely near here Dude, murdered someone? We looked up the when we first moved in here. We looked at the um, uh, uh, Megan's Law. You know yeah. what that is? Like for perverts? Yeah, all over the place. Really? All it's everywhere. By the way, this yeah. is like this all over the place. But convicted sex offenders aren't just people that like touch kids. It's also like public urination. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, and decent exposure can be like a lot of different things. Yeah, like it's not just like to kids. It could be drunk outside of a bar, you know, yeah. fucking do something. Do you, there could yeah. be a million different reasons that you get in trouble. So they're not all kid touchers, but. I think it's weird to look at the map when you see how many people close to you are are like creeps. Yeah, it it it, it kind of freaks you out a little bit. You and live in a really remote location, though, huh? No, 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 no. We're in a neighborhood. You're in a neighborhood. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, and I haven't looked it up. Look it up. I don't know. Yeah. If, if it pinpoints your own home. Yeah, like I don't. Know. It's like it's you, Nate. It's uh, yeah. It's we know am more. I? Yeah, am I uh, questioned a little bit? Yeah. I did that when I watched The Joker. When I watched The Joker, I questioned if I was a psychopath too. Did you watch yeah, that movie? I have not. When I watched it, I was like, am I? Well, they say comics are. Yeah. Comics have the tendency. And I think it's like if you can wrap your head around it. Like, you know, it's like how much stuff can you wrap your head around? Like, I could see what it gets to that point. I remember someone telling me about, you know, people that kill their kids. Like, you know, like, which is insane. Uh, hmm. but then, yeah, but then there's like parents that are like, when you have a kid like crying and like, you can see when someone's just like, so you, you're like, I can see how a kid could drive you to the point of it. Of murdering like, them. You, like you, you have to be crazy. But so if you have the craziness in you, a kid can be relentless. Yeah. And like, so you can see how like it can, you know, it's a dog barking that never stops. Like it just can, you can, you can see where they get to that point. How many kids do you have? Just one. We used to have two. No. Did it, it bark too much? One. Yeah, yeah. I did kill, kill the barking yeah, kid. I killed the other one. So um, yeah, we'll take it right back. You did kill one of your family members. Well, I didn't think that counted. Well, it's on camera and you know recorded, so yeah, that's that. You have one little kid. Is it joyous? Seven or is it trust? Is it's it the greatest thing ever. It is. Yeah, it's the it's the uh, the the best thing ever. I mean, they're you know, just how to you know. I mean, their face. They're you just love this thing more than anything does it look like you or your wife it, it can it can switch at the very beginning it was my wife all day long and then she i mean she's seven now now you can i can see you can see more of me in her yeah are and you nervous that it's a girl no think i think that? i you know i mean you definitely like uh i was excited to have a girl because i think you have a father-daughter relationship is pretty special and um so i, I really wanted a girl or I, you know, I mean, I was very happy to have a girl. And then, but then now when you, like, there's some stuff I was like, yeah, I wouldn't mind having a boy. Yeah. Like, we have a lot, you know, because then our daughter wants all girl stuff. And, like, I feel like our dog's a girl. And, like, you just, everything's a girl. And, like. A lot of girl stuff around the house. A lot house. of girl stuff. And then uh, when you, you go by toys. You like girl stuff, too. I like girl stuff, so it worked out. Yeah. But it's, when you go buy toys, you know, for Christmas, you're like, I wish. It'd be fun to be going by, you know, Ninja Turtle, whatever. Guns, footballs, into. yeah. Just guns. <laughs> just That's what kids like is guns. guns. Footballs. Yeah. I tried to roughhouse with her a little bit. Like, just, you know, you, you, you want her to have... Pull her hair, punch yeah. her a little bit, yeah, pull out yeah, a tooth yeah. when she's not looking. Yeah, just get after it. Uh, let her know what's up. Always let her know that <laughs> I am stronger than her. And uh, Don't forget I'm strong. Yeah, right, right when she goes to sleep, you close the door, you go, I'm stronger than you. I'm unbelievably stronger. You'll never be able to let my wife know the same thing, you know, constantly just pulling her hair, punching her, always going, I am stronger stronger than you. I am the strongest one in this house. There's some, there's something inside of me that thinks that your wife might be stronger than you. No, she's pretty tiny. She's weak. Yeah. Yeah. I think she's, she's probably has some strength, but she's just very small. We worked with someone today. The, the, the woman was jacked. The wife was jacked. Yeah. And arguably in my mind, maybe could hurt most of the, the men in the room that I was like, this woman is so jacked. She had to get big because her husband's big. He's a Mr. Jacked yeah. muscle guy. Yeah. But the wife was so big. Like she was, I mean, 
she had her arms were the size of my waist. It was ridiculous. Yeah. And she scared me a few times when she was like joking around. She got real aggressive. She had those like spikes, you know, steroid spikes. When someone's like, <laughs> anyway, no, I'm just kidding. And you're like, yeah. I don't know. I think that's real. Yeah. They're, they're, they're going about to go after it. Yeah. Like she almost felt like, like, like almost a couple of snaps. Yeah. Really sweet. But I did get nervous. I was like, she could beat the shit out of me. I've never, I don't, there was never, when we were kids, it was never, no, no moms were into CrossFit. There was no jacked no. moms. Now there's like jacked moms. Yeah. With massive legs. Well, they were, you just had moms. Yeah, they were just a mom. Yeah. Yeah. That the most they did the um, floor slidey exercise shit. You know, yeah. what was that? Like all that, uh, those videotapes, those VHS yeah, tapes. Yeah, yeah, did your yeah, mom yeah. do that stuff when you were a kid? No. Never? No. My mom did it. But yeah, I think moms would. You would see it. In shape. Was your mom yeah. a stay at home mom? Uh, she did a mix of, she did some of that and then she worked at a bank for a long time. As a teller? Yep. I'm yep. always fascinated by that. Yeah. It seems we like had, such a boring job for somebody. Well, it, my mom likes to talk. She's a people person. So yeah. it's you're getting to really talk to people and see people every day. And yeah. uh, and then she worked at a bank that was a smaller bank. I mean, they're big now in Nashville, but they were, uh, you know, it felt like a very family oriented bank. It was a bank that you knew everybody. And when we bought our house in Nashville, they, uh, we, they did something. I forget what they did. Pinnacle Bank. They um, did something to because we, we, we whatever we have to sign to buy a house. I don't know how to even buy a house. Even though I, I was just gonna one. say, did you buy a house? <laughs> I did. <laughs> I bought. We've had two different houses. We've moved, and I've yet to walk into it before it was bought. I was out of town both times. This sounds like a, uh, when you ask a kid how much a house costs, and they have no, you know, when you're like, how much, and they're like forty dollars, yeah. and you're like, yeah. yeah, that's exactly right. There was a comic, Jason Good, in New York, and uh, he, had, he always had a joke about a horse, and he said he's like, how much does a horse weigh? He's like, I don't know, two thousand pounds, hundred pounds. Like he's like, it doesn't. It's yeah, very funny to be like, I don't know how much a horse. Is. Like you just have no idea. How could you? Yeah, yeah you're it's such like, a ridiculous thing. You have no idea what to gauge it off of. Like right. someone's. They used to talk about cars, like the weight. Uh, yeah, do you know how much a car weighs? Uh, I know big ones, I think, are like 5,500 or like is a very that's heavy a, car. That's a heavy car. Yeah. Yeah, that's very But big. like, so how much, you know, it's like, but I, I just saw that. And so I wouldn't know, you know, it's like, Before how much that. is a Honda Accord? What, you're like, I don't know, 2,000 pounds? 48,000 pounds. Is it? No. I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know why I believe that. Super light. 5,500 was a, I just yeah, said 5,500. Is was it? A, yeah, you just Yeah, knew. I was thinking, it was, it was thinking 4,800. Yeah, but it has to be 3,000 pounds. Yeah, a couple thousand. Yeah. Depending on the car, for sure. Yeah. But what, Pinnacle Bank did what for you guys for your, when you moved in? They uh, gave us, like, the, it was the loan that we had to do. It was, like, on a weekend, and they someone, like, went and did it. Like, was able to, like, I think almost, like, front us the money just until the, a couple of days later so we could get the house. Ah. Uh, and uh, Those Netflix checks aren't coming in, huh? N this was just the stand-ups Netflix check, so <sighs> it was... Uh, but it was it was very nice, and it was like a bank that would like you know it wasn't just this enormous bank. It was a bank that you could call someone and they could be like, yeah, we're just do it. You They're know? at home. They have to you, put on some shoes to come finish the loan. They're like, yeah. I'm at home. I'll be there. Yeah, yeah. It's I'll a, figure I, it out. It, I live in the back. It's nice to have businesses like that's like a mom and pop shop type. It's place. a real mom and pop. The the, the, yeah. the new idea of mom and pop is so phony now when you hear someone like especially here in LA when they're like it's a mom and pop and you're like there's 17 of them yeah and it's a corporation that owns them they're like, yeah, I know but they're small yeah it's like a fran you own a franchise yeah like McDonald's are some of them are technically mom and pops because it's they're owned by a guy yeah and they're franchised out so they're all mom and pop in the world but it's a, a lot of pop and pops so. though a lot of pop and pop a lot of pop pop a lot of gay couples own McDonald's you know that. It's the McDonald's? largest. It's the largest franchise owned by gay couples. What? Yeah, that's made up. I have no idea. That's oh, okay. not true at all. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> but Chick Fil A is the opposite. Chick Fil A doesn't allow gays. That's yeah. the polar opposite. Yeah, yeah. Is that big by you? Yeah. Not yeah, allowing yeah. gays. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, the Chick Fil A uh, shit. I didn't. I never had it. It was. I grew up in Chicago. Didn't mean anything to us. Never even heard of it. Yeah. Came to the West Coast. All I heard was people like. Chick fil A's coming. It was like such a big deal. It was huge. It was, we had it. I don't remember as much growing up, uh, but I like, you know, it was, it was definitely a big deal, but it wasn't as like, when I was in high school, it wasn't, I don't think it, it was, was just a thing. It was like Taco Bell. It's like a thing that was around that you'd yeah, eat. Yeah. I went to, when did Chick fil A, were they even, I don't even remember going to it growing up. I mean, I had maybe it we didn't once. have it. And then I had it on this trip. You did? Yeah. Do you like fast food? I do. Is that, is that your like vice? 
Uh, yeah, ice cream has become a real big problem. Uh, it's getting out lately. of control. Yeah, it's real. It's not good. <laughs> I get eat, I eat it every night at home. If I'm in a hotel too, I'll eat it. Will you go buy it? Bring it to the hotel. I won't go buy and bring it to the hotel. I'll hopefully order it. But now, like some there's so if you get in some nice hotels there, like gelato, and I'm I'm a pretty chocolate. Just chocolate ice cream. I don't want to eat a bunch of stuff. I don't need it to be. You don't. You don't want the. Fruits. I don't want your take on it. I want what chocolate ice cream is. You know, supposed it's to thing. be. It's what it's supposed so to be. So nothing added. Nothing added. So I, Ben and Jerry's is like your nightmare. Yeah, I don't like that they. They put they put in like a whole cabinet. Every of shit. you can't even get regular, just like straight up, and even sometimes chocolate is like double chocolate and you're like just be chocolate <laughs> chocolate is they won't little, do regular chocolate they just they everything's got like a little twist to it yeah because I, well because at some point we went too far right I, like what was it 31 flavors yeah like i think 32 maybe you no, know was it was 31 it? 32 i don't no, know basket ramen's 31 flavors right yeah maybe. such a rude number just be 30 why not be a yeah. round number this doesn't make sense but 31 flavors i remember thinking as a kid is like there's so many flavors i'll never be able to get through all of them but then you realize just like cable channels you don't you you won't like eighty five percent of them. Yeah, you're like I'm only gonna like the top five. Yeah. So the other things are just for show. I never understood that. Yeah. Like we were at a fancy. We were in St. Louis. Uh, St. Louis. Me and Ali Mikowski, and we were traveling around town. We went to one of these famous ice cream shops, kind of like McConnell's out here, and mm. it was fancy, 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 right? Like lavender ice cream and yeah. all that stuff. And I ended up just getting uh, mint chocolate chip. I was just like this good old fashioned mint chocolate yeah. chip, but. But like all the other ones I tried, I wanted to try them all. And then once you try them, you're like, this is cool. I can't eat a cup of this. Yeah. It'll make me sick. Yeah. It's like, I don't want to eat a whole cup of this weird honeysuckle pomegranate. Yeah. It just didn't make, it never made sense to me. I was like, nobody could eat that much. I go to those places and get just chocolate. Just the like, regular just old, regular, if they even have it. If they, ha if they, if they have it, I'll get what, the closest to that I can get. I can do Sunday too, but with, but I just like chocolate syrup on you the You should back. open up an ice cream shop, Nate's Just Chocolate. I've I wanted to open a restaurant called No Onions and just have we don't do onions and just have no like it's just pretty straightforward. <laughs> no, I onions. don't like. Uh, I've gotten a little better with onions if they're fried, like if, well they're fried or if they're like what is it sauteed like where they're pa like oh yeah yeah like soft. Uh, uh, if they're cooked in a, I pan. don't like tomato tomatoes. I don't like either. I would do no tomatoes, no onions. Can't do tomato. Makes me yeah. nauseous. Yeah, I don't and I like and people. I always say ketchup. They're like, how do you like ketchup? Like, and you're like, well, it's, cooked. It's, well, it's completely different. It's cooked tomato. Yeah. Do you know the science behind this? No. The chem the, there is a, um, the chemical composition of tomatoes when they're cooked changes for your taste buds very drastically, much different than most vegetables. So yeah. when you cook tomato, uh, or tomato's a fruit, isn't it? No. Isn't it? Is it? Yeah, it is. It has it's seeds. A fruit? It has seeds. Fruits have seeds. Vegetables do not. Yeah, tomatoes yeah. have seeds. It's fruit, just like an yeah. apple. Yeah, it's one of those weird things. Anyway, they suck. But when you cook them, the chemical composition changes so drastically that your taste buds react to it significantly differently. So it, it receives it different. Not like when you cook broccoli. Yeah. Nothing really changes that drastically, and except it brings out some of the more health aspects. Yeah. But with tomatoes, it physically tastes different for people cook. So cooked tomatoes, love. Like on a pizza, yeah. I like I like sun-dried tomatoes. I like cooked, just cooked tomatoes. Any version, but raw, no, nah, I won't do it. I refuse. I wonder if I could do sun-dried tomatoes then. I don't think I even, I don't, just don't even try. I would try I, those. You'd like them. Yeah. They're really good. Yeah. Sun-dried tomatoes I like. Stewed tomatoes, like in, like chunks of tomatoes in an yeah. Italian sauce. Yeah. I can do that too. Yeah, I don't. I, you try I, it for I, me. I will you text away. me and let me know when you try it? I will. It? I'll, uh, yeah, because I, I didn't know that was even a door open to me. I know. I just, I, I watched your eyes close. light up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, I still don't, I'm not, a, you know, I don't want to dive into them. I don't need them <laughs> in my life that much, but. You don't, you're not going to attack tomatoes head on? You're gonna no, I'm not time. like, you know, I, uh, my wife likes tomatoes, but I don't. I try to do stuff, I will try anything. You'll I try do, any like, food? Yeah, you know, I've had alligator and what well, I'm trying, all I think is like ostrich or uh, trying to get a weird I've had, had a lot snake. of that. Snake is good, actually. Yeah. Yeah. When it's cooked right, it's good. There's a place here in LA called Animal. Have you ever heard of it? Mm -mm. You eat meat, though, right? Mm -hmm. Or no? Yeah. If you eat meat, you should go. It has all sorts of weird meat, crazy different traditional stuff. Yeah. But also weird, off the beaten path, 
yak, stuff like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's kind of cool, though. I mean, yeah. everything comes with so much flavor. It's funny that it would be here. In L.A.? I just think, feel like this is such a hell, like, you know, it's like not on board with so much stuff. Um, This is a massive city. Yeah. Yeah. I think people lump true. us into this Hollywood thing all the time, but you're like... They do. You know, there's also like an, another 20 million people here that don't work in Hollywood. Yeah. So it's like, L.A. gets a shitty rap. That it's like true. saying New York is Times Square. It's like... Uh, I so, guess that's a thing that's there. Yeah. But it's not even close to being New York. Yeah, everybody's like regular. <laughs> everyone's just a human being. Uh, yeah. yeah, not everyone's there's in a, a lot Mickey more Mouse normal costume. people. Yeah, I, that, that's LA. There's a lot more like working class people than they could give any credit for. Nobody knows that. They're like, what do you mean? Everyone's out there the Hollywood phony. You're like, yeah. Okay, I guess. In what, I guess around us. Well, the, you know, the pers- perspective, is that the right word, right? Perspective that sure. you give. <laughs> I think I feel like I was searching for another word, uh, but it's it's that you see you see on TV you see this that's the stuff that you see. I mean I've lived here so I know, but you, I think you just think it's this. And then when I come out here, I'm just you're just I'm completely in that world. Yeah, that you think that's all it is. It's hard to escape when we work in it, but that's yeah. why like uh, that's why it's nice. Like you know, I moved away from a lot of it so I could live in my own little nook. Yeah. I just wanted to be kind of not in the hustle and bustle. I lived in it next to the comedy store for years. I wanted to be able to walk there. And it was nice to live in West Hollywood, but I just, it's its really hard. You have to get out of that scene. And it's really interesting. The moment I go back over the hill, I feel different because yeah. it's the the vibrant, the, the, like the frequency is different of like people and what's going on. And you, you do feel like it's all kind of the the flow and the hustle and bustle is so different. And so I understand why from people from places where they don't have all of that, when they come here, they're like, whoa, it's weird. It's nuts here. It's yeah. like, I get it. Like I, I do. But also I love it. I don't know if I could ever, I don't know if I could ever disappear completely from it. It'd be hard. New York was like that, uh, where I lived the most. And when I go back to New York, I don't know how I could live there again. In Manhattan? Did you live in Manhattan? No, I lived in Queens. Yeah. And it was like that. It was like very normal. A lot of people were normal, and uh, but it's it's just so hectic. Yeah. And so when I go back now and I'm in Manhattan, it's just it's like so much. It's a lot. And then you're like, I don't, I, I could never. I don't think I could go back now and live there. Well, you, well, and to be fair too, you you moved to a big small city is what I want to call it, like Nashville. I'd never really, I'd never done Nashville. I played a club for the first time a month ago, mm-hmm. um, and. Uh, you know, I, I, it's diff, It's different than I thought, really. I never got to explore the city as much la- the first time I ever went there. But it's a city, city. But it's not a big city. It's yeah. more like a little. It's like a little town city. It's interesting. Yeah, like Charlotte. You still get the like. vibe of like having all the city stuff. Mm-hmm. But I mean, yeah, people could live there. I mean, people live downtown now. Or in the Gulch is this cool area. It's a walking area, like in the city. Yeah, I went like, down there. Yeah, so you could go live down there, and I think you'd have a completely different experience than what i have which is in the suburbs of nashville you're way out yeah yeah Yeah. i not way out no i mean it's 20 minutes to downtown but you just would never go downtown like there's no you don't you you would never go i mean if someone's in town and you might go or maybe you go eat at a restaurant they're down there but you're not i'm not really going downtown no uh yeah there's nothing really to do well let me say this this is not don't don't take offense to this if you're a titans fan I I'm going to the game Sunday. Okay, well that stadium, it's yeah, Mm-mm. it's like they didn't finish it. Well, it's like something's missing. We were coming over the bridge, and I was like, "What is it? What happened?" Is yeah, not? it's what's well, because open. Do they need a the loan middle. or something? It's the weirdest looking thing. Uh, it's you know it's been it's twenty years now. Ninety seven, I think, is when they they built, built it. Built it or something, maybe ninety nine or something like that. And uh, it's so they need they need it updated. I I believe it's pretty. And yeah. it's um, it's been there for a little bit. And I feel like it was, you know, we built it right before stadiums started becoming what they they are now. Uh, yeah. And now they're you know you got Atlanta and Dallas and so you have all this. I think everything should be domes. Yeah. For everything. You do. I do. I, I no one. You don't like cold weather football. Hey, people that say they like it don't are not at that game. Well, yeah, so, I don't like, need to go to the game, yeah. but I want to watch them do it. Yeah, you want to watch them do it, but like, you, if you want people to go to the game, yeah. which is fun, then you can't. 
it can't be 10 degrees outside. Sure. I mean, I grew and up in then, Chicago going to freezing yeah. games. Yeah, and it's like I get that you be you're you're miserable, and now we're in such a comfortable like life that no one's like wants to do that. You got these TVs that are sixty inches. Everybody has sixty inch TVs sure. or something, so sure. you can watch it perfectly. I mean, even when I watch my teams, the Titans or Vanderbilt or I do, I like watching them on TV because then too you, I want to hear them, what they're going to say about all this stuff, and you you want to be able to see all that stuff, so. You Unless, like play by play, yeah. You like you like hear. I mean, especially Vanderbilt. Like I feel like we don't get talked about a ton. So I like to hear, especially if we're like we played Notre Dame last season, and I was like excited to listen to that because you're hearing people that you never talk about Vanderbilt talk about Vanderbilt, right? And do they know and what so, they're talking about? No, no. I don't think anybody knows what they, like because <laughs> they they don't cover Vanderbilt. Like right. they don't cover so. I always think that with the Titans too. Like, I mean, I love, pardon the interruption, and uh, when you hear them talk about the Titans, sometimes they can say stuff like Tannehill took over from Mariota, and they're like, I don't know why they're doing that, and you're like, because you're not watching them regularly, right? And so that happens everywhere. If anybody talks about your team, they're not in it as much as you, unless it's a so big it's market, abroad, unless yeah. it's Chicago. Or, well, I mean, know, even us, we just get trampled on. We just get made fun of all the yeah. time. But I mean that's just because we're because of our history. But you're right, especially Sports Center. You're talking about East Coast programming, so they really favor the Northeast. Oh yeah, they talk about the Redskins like yeah. all the time, and you're like, dude, nobody, nobody cares, nobody cares, nobody cares. Most people and don't even know where that team is. You know yeah. that they took a poll. Most people don't know where oh, really? Redskins play. Yeah, they have no idea. Oh wow. Well, DC throws off most yeah. Americans. I feel yeah. like you ask most Americans where DC is, they're like, mm, yeah, near New York, I think. Yeah, yeah. You, you like it's you, its own little thing. Yeah, people just I think people forget how geographically challenged most Americans are. Yeah. You know, they, you ever seen those polls when they do like Kimmel does that sometimes where they're like, how many states in the United States? Everyone gets it wrong. They're like 46 or 48. We added the two. Yeah. Nobody knows. It's, I always wanted to say 52 sometimes. Just because it sounds like we added two. Yeah. I People love why. the added two. Alaska yeah. and Hawaii. Right. I forgot about them. Yeah. Yeah. So I say 54. Yeah. I say we added them twice just in case. Yeah. Just to make sure. We like them. It's like getting remarried. You've been remarried. You're going to get no. remarried. But I'm saying if you propose again, to yeah, you got to do it. Yeah, do, would do you ever again. do that? Get married again to your uh, wife? I always think I owe my wife another wedding. Like, uh, oh, was your first one bad? It wasn't bad. I've talked about it in my act, but it, we it was uh, it was it was it was not bad. It was just we had like a lot of stuff. It was just not expensive, you know. Yeah, but that's what's it, nice. that's okay. Yeah, it's okay. It was. Uh, you know, I don't think it was, you know, it wasn't this big party. It wasn't this big. You go to all these other weddings. It wasn't just, it was just, it was fun. It was fine. And like, uh, you sound nothing like you crazy. loved it. Yeah. It sounded like it was perfect. Yeah. No, it was, I mean, it wasn't big. We didn't have a, you know, I got married in 2006. So it was, it was, it was fine. But it, I always just thought like, you know, we could have done one that's could have like th thro now. thrown a big, big bash. Yeah. Could have done a bigger of a bash. Like. All my friends, because it was like at home, and uh, it was on. We did it on a Friday, Friday the thirteenth. Uh, oh, that's good luck. Yep, and then uh, we did Friday thirteenth. Uh, <laughs> did you do? We had people die. People died from people that died wedding. at the wedding. No, from the wedding. The oh, guy that cool. sold us the ring died, uh, committed suicide, and then because uh, oh. of the wedding, that's how bad it was. He was like, it was just not fun. He goes, it just was a brutal time. Yeah, and I mean, a lot, not a lot of people even invite the person that buys that sells them the ring, but we did. You did? No. no. What a, <laughs> I was like, what a strange yeah, thing to just do. To go like, but maybe and I would love for you to come to this yeah. wedding. He's like, he I was be like, honored. oh god, I'd rather kill myself. And then he did. Um, <laughs> and then we had the guy, the photographer. He died. He had cancer. Like, uh, but it was just not, anybody else you knocked off people. the list? Any any other grandparents Oof. died? Uh, no, not wedding? yet. Uh, so fingers crossed. Yeah. You had a ten-year re, uh, reunion. <laughs> That's your ten-year anniversary. That's what I used to call it. Yeah, the reunion. reunion. Yep. Did you do something big for that? Uh, did we do anything? I don't think we did anything. Sounds big. like a no. Yeah. No, I mean our, you know, our, our my regular life. I feel like in this business is big and stuff. You go to the places. And yeah, but I mean for her. Stuff. Uh, I didn't do. What did I? No, I got her. Uh, yeah, I got her earrings, like very nice earrings. What's the best gift you've ever bought your wife? Uh, I get, I mean, I was always a pretty good gift giver, uh, and but I don't ever remember anything now. Di these diamond earrings I got her, and they they were because she wanted uh, 
you know, nice diamond earrings. They're nothing crazy, but they were hangies. No, no, no. But they had, like had a story behind them and like how they're made, and it was an earring that like is not really a, a cut or something that's not done anymore. Ooh. And yeah, but you can't even tell. Well, you like, well, yeah, right. People wouldn't know. No one's gonna walk up. But like the lady that we got them from, it's just all her stuff is uh she's on her own and she just finds stuff that's pretty unique and has like something to it oh that's a little cool. bit more so it's not you're a good gift giver then i uh, yeah i don't think i'm as good now I, i'm i'm falling off i'm terrible but i was uh i could usually come up with some something i'm, but I'm so forgetting bad. everything right i now. have no idea what i'm gonna give the bag for for christmas it sucks just not calling her the bag maybe you know no 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 she that's her name that's her name yeah her name's oh, a bag i, I introduced you to her yeah that is true yeah <laughs> i thought we were just being fun in there but uh no no, no that's her real name the bag yeah yeah the bag yeah no um i i have no idea what i would give her i have no i'm so bad at that shit it's unbelievable i try as hard as i can to try to cultivate something in my mind that would be worth it or meaningful and i'm stupid when it comes yeah. to that stuff i don't i don't know i just want you to tell me what do you yeah. want? I need you to tell me what you want because yeah. I'm going to get it for you. That's why like when she got me the 23 and me, it was like a good, I think now you got to give a gift that's something that they're, they're not going to do themselves. Like it's almost like something cool, mm. something that's like, oh yeah, you know what? I would have want to try this. And you know, I just can't, I can't figure out what that is though. Yeah. It's like an experience. Yeah. Experiences are cool. Yeah. I guess that's smart. Yeah. Live stuff. I should yeah. just write this down. You should just tell me what. Yeah. Yeah. Out. Well, luckily we're recording it. Uh, this isn't where this stuff's wrong. Uh, no, no. I just wanted to come hang out with you for an hour. Yeah, I house. like it. I said, "Come over, man. Can yeah. you kill some time tonight and come over to the yeah. house?" Yeah, and that's you know. I Before like, you leave to. LA, are you excited to go back to Nashville? Yeah, I go back home and have a week and go get all Christmas stuff and do that. And then you're back on the road. Uh, not till January, January twenty first. Unless you need people to go out to, it's like Joliet, Illinois, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Joliet, dude. Why, wait, wait. Yeah. Where's jo what's in Joliet? Is there a theater out there? Yeah. In Joliet, theater, yeah. What, have you ever played? It's a big one. Uh, I don't. Is there a club there? I don't, not in Joliet no. that I know of. But I, I don't. I, people like yeah. me, we Pure, don't go to Joliet. Yeah. There's a club. That's down south. Yeah, another okay. place I don't go. Yeah, I stay right near the, the city. Yeah, and you know, I, I started in Chicago. Which yeah, I think we talked about it. You uh, did. I did. Yeah. Why and would you so, go down to Joliet? Why Joliet and why Peoria? That's so. You don't want to just. I want to just Peoria. play the city. Uh, I think we will go back to the city probably later in the year. But you're just hitting these other markets. I mean, it's about hitting markets. Yeah, you got, you got it. Got to go to like different places. They have, I mean, they have places to play. How big is the theater down there in Joliet? I think it's big. I I I, I want to say it's close to two, uh, and so then these are the markets that are going to be interesting to see because some of them, you know, I don't I don't know I don't know how it's going to how they're going to do. You're going to do okay. great, man. You're a great fucking comic. People like to see your shit. They'll come out. Joliet, they'll come out to see you. Joliet, well, a shout out. I've never, I've never really been to Joliet, but and or down south. I never went to Southern Illinois because for me as a kid, it was like I, there was, I don't know, there was not unless you went to school down there. It was yeah. hard to go down. It was you know, no reason to go down okay. there. But well, I'd imagine Chicago, y'all, you know, think pretty high of yourself. And we do down on the other state parts of the state. We look, yeah, we are like the most New York City, you know. Yeah, it's like well, upstate New York. I mean, they don't they don't care for that. It's just more like if it weren't for us, they wouldn't exist. Yeah. So that's kind of like just an honest. Uh, yeah, yeah. I it's get like it. you know how we're like we're the we're the literal means of any sort of income is a m booming metropolitan area. You know, especially with like, the whole weight of the city. the whole weight of the Midwest really relies on Chicago's yeah. shoulders. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's I don't think big... Cleveland's getting it done. Uh, yeah. Indianapolis isn't really fucking pulling their weight. You know, yeah. Milwaukee is blacked out on cheese so yeah not that i don't love these places i'm the just saying though ringing milwaukee around yeah kind of oh greek yeah the, freak. you think that's the revenue that's changing greek freak? Milwaukee. you don't think greek freaks i, I like bringing him. heat no. to the he is a little bit yeah until he leaves until he's like i gotta get out of here he's a dude that acts like he doesn't want to leave uh i wonder why that is though i think that, you know if it's it's now like what i like is all these uh smaller cities are able to like look cleveland was not anything lebron made cleveland yeah he did and a good then thing for that. so you have like in milwaukee you go there i mean if they're smart like why, why if you come live here the taxes i mean bryce harper not coming to, to los angeles because mm -hmm. the taxes which i think was a mistake because sometimes you do need to do stuff for your career but the greek freak he gets talked about as much as anybody on yeah. uh espn no one you know it's not like 
people don't know who he is. And if he goes and wins and does stuff, then why would they not? And then he can – his money goes so much farther. Yeah, he can – yeah. He can well, have, uh, you know – A mega mansion in Milwaukee. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a city, and you're you probably not bothered like everywhere else. There's not the pressure of everywhere else. I, everything's expanding. People don't – people cannot live in Los Angeles or New York anymore. They That's can like go you, live huh? wherever. Yeah, I mean, Atlanta shoots everything down there. and Yeah. New Orleans. I mean, when people shoot movies – I've not I've done movies, but like it seems like they're everybody's in other. They're all over the place. They're now. all over the place. No, so people are never even here. Like you know, all these movie stars are not here. They're having to go somewhere else and shoot. And if you're a famous movie star, yeah. If you're a peddler in the business like me, then you got to stick around. Yes, well, the I'm, auditions. I'm, I'm, and I'm stuff kicking stones here. around here. I still got to stick around. But don't you do a lot of like uh video auditions like send in sometimes but a lot of times you go you go it is still better to go yeah i mean look if i was up to me i'd live somewhere in the midwest yeah i love i do love the midwest i think it's like the the greatest people on planet earth you know i really do like miss that vibe like and i tease all the other places but like fucking i love wisconsin it's a it's a wonderful place with a ton of great lakes Mm mm-hmm uh it's just like the vibe is just different in the midwest i love all the people down there I miss it a lot, but there's a piece of me that's like, mm, I can't do it right now. I just could, I don't, I don't have, you know, I don't have yeah, the ability. It's definitely, uh, if you want to still do TV, I kind of still like doing TV sometimes. Yeah. So it's easier to do TV from here. Yeah. You know? No, it's all made here. So you, I mean, you have to do it. I started touring and that, that's, and that was the route that I took. And so it was, it, it's brutal to tour out of here and how much I was going to do it. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to do it out here. Yeah. And then I was leaving them by themselves out here. So I was like, now they're home. And then, you know, my daughter has a life and her friends and we're, you know, these little girls that she has in her neighborhood that just run over in between the houses. That's so nice. Yeah. And so it's nice to be in Nashville. Luckily is a cool town right now. And it's a, I mean, I love Nashville. And so it's, it's a cool place to be. It's not like I was moving back to some weird town there. It was like, oh, right. It was like a place where all the agencies are at and you can. Oh yeah, that's right. There is. Well, and because the music industry too. So yeah. there's, there's a lot of industry that's down there. Yeah. People are moving there. People have houses there. And do you, uh, did you have that kind of same childhood when you grew up there? As far as in the industry? No, no, no. I music? mean like this whole, like this, this idea of like running around the neighborhood, the neighbor's houses and all that stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. We would, I mean, we had it, uh, we weren't in the neighborhood as much, uh, as we were, but we had like, I remember we, we would play football like in our, we had three yards. And so we would play football in those three yards. And then there was a guy across the street that had an enormous yard and, uh, it was just very deep and we were just playing his yard and now never asked. Yeah, no, never asked one time. Never asked. I don't even know, you know, but he was, I broke my car. I cracked my collarbone in his yard. Uh, he was cool about it. Yeah. He was mad about us playing in his yard. Never asked. <laughs> uh, he did it. No, we, my brother tackled me and then, uh, but yeah, I remember it was very funny. You would just play in their yard and like, yeah, that's never, a vibe. I would that's mow my vibe. neighbor's yard She'd pay me five dollars. Five bucks. She for the was, whole lawn. yeah. I mean, she was in her eighties, Miss Givens, and then uh, I, I would cut her grass and my grass, and then I'd go up and she'd give me five dollars, and which was a lot. That's a good amount of cash back. Then they could buy you a lot of soda. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you have your grass cutting shoes? Uh, yep. Yeah, you had your grass yep. cutting shoes. We had a hill, or like just a, a very small one, but it was very steep, and I remember I had a hard time cutting that. Cause it was, you know, but you just figured it out. Like the weight of the mower you're the saying. Weight, yeah. It would go over it. Yeah, yeah. Cu- I couldn't, I wasn't strong enough to hold on to it. So you would just be a lot of like, it just, the mower tipped over. Do you remember over. the first time you, you pulled us, pulled a, pulled a mower string and it went on? Yeah. I mean, I don't remember the first, it wasn't like, you a, know what I mean though. Yeah. Like yeah. When, I when remember it ha- when, doing you, it. when you become like a young man and you yeah. can do it, you feel well, like you're out badass. there just trying it. I remember days not wanting to mow the grass and just like hoping there was no gas in it. And be like, Dad, and then being no like, gas. "There's no gas," and then he's like, "He doesn't want to agree to gas," and then you just didn't have to mow the yard that day. Yeah, that's perfect. But you, I mean, you know, mowing the yard was you just did it. You had to do it. I did. I did it. You know, growing up and now here we pay people. Yeah, I don't mean I wouldn't. I, do you, you know, mow your own lawn? No, isn't that we, funny? Yeah, we we did. Uh, my wife would mow, or the first house we moved back, she would do it. 
and she would do it equal rights right when i come home that's right from the road she wouldn't do it while i'm gone she'd do it as i'm pulling up from the airport and she'd just get started and i think she was doing that on purpose to like oh, i gotta mow the grass and like yeah you could have mowed it i was gone for four days yeah why do you have to do it this sounds I, like a yeah. fight yeah you could have yeah. done it before you could have done it before and you're doing it in front of me because i think you're doing it to uh show me that you're that's how i would take it is that she's showing it me you know like well i'm mowing the grass i'm working you're not working she's saying that you just got off the road but you're late now you're you're not working i'm working. yeah well i think it's a hard time for them to think the road is work i think it's a hard time for sometimes a lot of people don't think it's work they don't think it's working it's a lot you're someone said i heard recently you you are you get paid to travel that's what you get paid i've heard a different but a lot of different yeah. versions like you get yeah. paid to pick up checks like you're getting yeah. paid to like do the task which is do stand up comedy but 90% of what you're doing is really like maneuvering to get to a place to get the thing done so you can get earn a living to go mm -hmm. back home it's a, but the, the, the hard thing too is they see it as like it's a party. I mean, like where you're out drinking, you're having fun, you're, mm -hmm. you know, like so they think it's, it's, you're living your dream. And so when someone sees someone living their dream, then it's not, they don't look at it as work and it's hard for them to like wrap their head around that. Sure. And you're like, well, it is work. This is. Well, it's kind of like when you go see a professional athlete, like they are working. Yeah. But you're like, no, nah, well, how much a game. work goes into it? Well, then, too, I always think, People see comics and they think it's easy, and you're like, yeah, because we make it look very easy. So if you work hard, because you easy. work yeah. hard, it eventually it, it's never easy, but you can just make it look easy. You yeah. know, when you feel nervous on stage, or if you mess up, and you're like, I messed up, and everybody's like, I don't know where did you mess up, but you know where you messed mm -hmm. up, and then it's like that, and they just think like, well, I mean, that's why everybody thinks they can do. We do the one thing. I did a corporate show for real estate agents recently, and I told them, I go, I think we have a lot in common. And we both have jobs that everybody thinks they can do. That's true. Everybody thinks they can be a comedian. Everybody thinks they could do real estate. I think I could do real estate. I mean, every, everybody tries to do real estate because it's just selling a house. Who My, cannot sell a house? Many more people can do real estate than can do stand-up comedy. That is true. That's yeah. uh, way more. <laughs> yeah. But we yeah. have everybody that thinks they can do it. Right. Yeah. That's the same thing. People do think they can do stand-up comedy. And when they tell you about it, it's very frustrating when they're like, I'm kind of funny. Yeah. And they yeah. think, I just don't want to go on stage. You're like, well, that's part of it that's like, that's a huge that's piece. a huge piece yeah. that they're like well i just don't want to go i always remember people when i was it happened too when i moved back to nashville like uh, nashville comics because i think that they see you back in nashville and they're like well you live here and you're like yeah man i was gone 13 years <laughs> yeah. i moved to chicago with a buddy and i've never lived outside the state of tennessee like and then i'm, I'm just in chicago and where'd you live we lived in uh, Bucktown, yeah, Bucktown, Damon great. Avenue, and then Chicago and Ashland, uh, the wow. corner of that. I worked yeah. at uh, uh, my first place. I did comedy was uh, Coyle's Tippling House, and, and then it became Orange Crush. <laughs> yeah, and but you would do those shows, but I was in, uh, you know, I was in Chicago, and it's like this crazy city that like, I just, it was like wild. Then I remember going to New York, and I remember going around New York when I moved to New York. And I remember just being like, I was just so confused on where I was. Like you would come out of the subway and you're like, I don't know where Tennessee is from here. I don't know where anything's <laughs> like, I don't know the directions of anywhere. Right. You're just like, it's just, you walk out of that subway and you're like, it's just buildings and it's just chaos and just people are just walking by and people are yelling and you're just like, what is going on? It's overwhelming. But that's, you know, but then you, you go like, yeah, I did that. And then all these comics sometimes that never move from their hometowns. And then they're just like, well, I just didn't. New York, it's all political there. Like they always say stuff like There's yeah. a bunch of excuses usually. Yeah, yeah, there's. And you're like, yeah, it is, man. And that's that's why you have to stay there until it's not. Until right. you're a part of it. Or or until you feel like. I, I just feel like you, you people know when they're like, I wonder if I should go. It's like, you'll know when you need to go somewhere, yeah. if you need to go somewhere. Yeah. How, how long were you in Chicago? Two years. And then New York? Uh, almost nine. And then here? Two. Damn. That's that's wild. Nine yeah. in New York. I didn't know it was that long for you in New York for some yeah. reason. Yeah. Because I don't associate you as a New York comic. Oh, yeah. I don't know why. Like I have There's some weird yeah, ownership that I think you're kind of like a West Coast comic for some reason. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I never have when, got that. Because when I saw when you, you... When we started hanging out, I was out here. Yeah. Uh, no, I was... Uh, I'm a New York guy. I'm a big New York guy. That's so funny. That's where everything I learned was in New York. Everything. Your attitude is not New York. 
No, but that's, I mean, I'm, I'm not from there. I know, but, but, but a lot of guys adopt that personality. A lot of people that move there from somewhere well, else. I think everybody's better. I mean, I, I can have that attitude of like New York. I, I do have an ownership of the New York scene. I mean, when I moved there, you know, I would see Burr and like, I would watch all these guys, Patrice. You know, I was, I used to sit in Patrice's car, Patrice O'Neill. And uh, which if anybody hasn't watched his Elephant in the Room special, Patrice would have probably been one of the better, best ever, uh, which he died, and that hurt him. And yeah, dying, the, was a, that yeah. dying kind of stops you a little bit. Yeah, that you know that really stopped it. Uh, but seeing those guys, Geraldo, I mean, I you know just around everybody, it was uh, unreal. And I, I just think New York guys, L.A. I never know who I don't know who's your guys out here. Well, like, Burr is out here. I know, but Burr's a New York. To me, Burr's a New York. You think he's a L.A. comic? He's been out here for so long. He lives. That out, doesn't he loves matter. He was here. already huge, though. He was already like really. That's not starting. true. Not huge, huge, but he was. By the time he left New York, unless he left before I realized. By the time he left New York, he was already start. I think he already sold out he, like I, Town Hall. Or, I think. I think he. I think he was. I think he developed really into like this the booming thing he became when he when he was living out here. Maybe that's just my opinion, but I but do that's, think he But that's when up. stuff comes together. Yeah. He built all that in New York. I guess. This yeah. is a New York versus Los Angeles thing. Then. Rogan? Rogan's massive. Rogan's, a, Rogan's an L.A. guy. Yeah, yeah. He is inherently an L.A. guy out there here. There are Liza. I mean, there's a LA, lot of people. Whitney. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of top comics. I'm a big... Uh, Allie. Yeah, Allie. Well, Allie was in New York, though. Allie was in New York. I was yeah, in New she York. she busted here. I know, but it, does, do you think, it doesn't really matter where you pop. It's like... Where you, you put do in the, the work, work. Yeah. is where, the, but you keep doing the work until you pop. So it doesn't like I know, but most of the the groundwork, you know, I th is where I think you are. It's it. I guess it's each. It's maybe it's not us to decide. It's the person where they feel. Yeah, you know, because everybody's gonna be more s somewhere. You know, I mean, they could live. I mean, I'll probably be, there's a chance I could be in Nashville more than I'm in either of those cities. So, you know, I don't. But I but I learned in New York. That's where I learned. That's, that's where, where that's where that's where you got your That's where I cut got your the, teeth. Yeah. The chops. Yeah, when I well when I met you out here, it was kinda like you were that's when you were I think you were you were in a great groove. It was kinda like you know, maybe a, a confluence of things that were happening that you were really kind of starting to pop. This really stuff. Hard well, the big saying that I think is true is always like you move to New York to get good, move to LA to get famous. It was always the saying I heard. Mm -hmm. And I I, 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 did, I always liked that saying, like, because it was like, it makes sense. And, you know, and uh, New York is uh, a good place to, is a great place to get, I think, really good. But there's not a lot of industry in New York, even though people think it seems like it is. But it's not remotely like here. No yeah. one's coming to the shows. In L.A. is that idea that there could be, you never know who's in the crowd. New York, you know who's in the crowd. It's no one's there yeah, like, picking people out, like right. going like, you're going to be, big, you know, whatever. That's all out here is a lot more of that. L.A.'s got, you know, it is, they do have a, Tosh was, isn't he, he's all L.A. Yeah, but he, I, you know, I don't see him around the scene anymore too. He yeah. kind of is so isolated. But he was a guy that would have been. Yeah, d without a doubt. I mean. Dalia. Yeah, Chris. I mean, it was hard for, I started here. So it was weird, you know? I grew up in Chicago and then yeah. started here. So it was you hard. You guys have... The grind here was really hard. You know, people are like, oh, you get good in New York. It's like, you get good here because the competition is unbelievably thick because you have just the best of the best who are yeah. already professionals and there's not a lot of space for you as a young comic. Yeah. So I had to do so much bullshit before I even got even a little bit of recognition. And and I sometimes I wish I went to New York because I knew I would have gotten a lot, uh, a lot more sets. I would have gotten around more. Yeah. Here you really have to, it's a fist fight to get on these show. I mean, yeah. back then it's not. Yeah. I don't know what it is now. Yeah, yeah. But I just think it's like that. It was it was gut. It was a gut wrenching experience that I don't wish on my enemy because it's it fucking sucked. It was hard to get spots out here. Once a night was big out here. If you could get up once yeah. a night as a young comic, that's huge in New York. Yeah. That's a fucking joke. Yeah. So it's almost like at the you beginning, know, uh, you could do if you did mics, you could do more than that. But also, yeah. I mean, like a book show here was so hard to get. Yeah, that's where I think in New York, that's why it's so good with you do so much stage time. I mean, you're doing, once you get into the rooms, and when I first moved to New York, it was all clubs. Like, there wasn't, you know, they had Rafifi or they had like some other little. Did you catch shows. a rising? Was that still around when you were there? 
No. Or Dangerfield's, none of that stuff was around. Dangerfield's still there. Is it still, still there now? There. Oh, but shit. I, uh, I did Dangerfield. That was the last club I got past at. Uh, Who passed you first? Probably, uh, like, officially. I, Boston, I went to Boston Comedy Club. But I, uh, I, but I was, like, barking to get on stage. Uh, that's something that people don't really know what that is too but if the internet's unfamiliar that you have to physically stand out front and then and, yell and, and comedy got show, a great comedy, comedy show, show tonight <laughs> it's what it's pete Holmes crashing i did that with pete pete yeah. got me barking at boston and uh yeah you stand out I, and i remember just thinking i don't want to be on this i, I want to get where i don't have to stand on this corner like your goals when you first moved to New York, you're not thinking I want a special. You're no. like, I don't want to be on this corner. Right? Can I get what inside? What can I do? <laughs> yeah, if I could just be the guy that like at least takes the ticket at the door, that would be huge. That's a big deal. And then just because I, mean, I remember being just freezing cold and just, you know, I mean, just standing out there and it was just brutal. It was brutal. Yeah, and you're just like, hey, we got a great comedy show tonight. And, uh, and no one cares. Is it free? Yeah, that's it, right? Yeah. Is it free? Free? No one cares at all. Uh, that's a hard. That's a hard testament to New York comedy that LA comics don't really have to do. LA comics had to like bring friends. You had to like go yeah. get friends. They had bring shows. shows there, but yeah. then that was tough because you're like, I don't. I moved here. I don't so have like, any friends. I don't have any friends. Yeah. Well, we don't have any friends yeah. either here. Yeah. It was just like LA was like convincing someone at your day job is really yeah. what it was. It was like, can you bring everyone from the day job to come to my fucking show? Yeah, and that's really what that's what it was for me. It's convincing yeah. everyone in my shitty office day job to please come watch me. And yeah. I felt beholden to them then from then on because you're like, even if you were good, even if I did very well yeah. and I was strong, it still felt like I owed them something for doing yeah. that for me. So it was just like, oh, it was like such a a cycle I had to live through all the time of like, mm, can you guys come to this show? It'd mean a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. I hated doing that. Yeah. Even I, when they were like, you were funny. I was like, it yeah. doesn't matter. I feel fucking like I held you hostage to come see me, you know? Yeah. And yeah. they have to watch the whole show. And like, Well, that's the hardest part because there's yeah. a lot of other shit on the yeah. show. Even if they like you, they're like, oh, those other guys were really fucking bad. You're like, yeah. Uh, when you got bigger and then you were able to do bring your shows, but as just like the pro on the show, mm -hmm. those were the best shows to get tapes at. 100%. Because it was like the crowd, you know, as long as they didn't, sometimes the crowd can feel like ownership over their person. So like it's hard for them to like not laugh at, at the sh whole show because yeah. they feel like they got to do good for their guy, and then but like once you got out of that, I remember going to Caroline's, and they would you those bringer shows were the best shows because it was you when you went up you were no threat to their friend because you were the professional on the show, mm -hmm. and so you could just go. It was like always a place that you always wanted to get it, and they taped all the shows. So you could get a good, like a great tape to submit for like a late night set. And they were happy to see you because you were actually solid. You were a, a So common. to them, they were like, yeah. holy shit, this that is good. Is yeah. good. I love to see the surprise in a room like that when they go, oh, like they're, they're like, they're, they're so, uh, they're so excited that you're, you're actually good that now they really get into it. Yeah. You know? They love it. Yeah. They were already There's nothing dedicated. better. I remember Seinfeld saying that where the only thing that he misses from starting is the crowd not knowing him. And it is like you, that's something that you got to like really enjoy when you're in it. Cause if you blow up, then it, you know, then it kind of goes away. But, uh, I mean now, like when I do these shows and now I know this, you're in a theater, these people are here for me. It's kind of beautiful though. It's beautiful. And now you're the thing you're going for is like, I got to be as good as what they think I am. That's great. And so that's, so you still have that drive, but like I still do corporates and these people don't know me and like, it's it's the pretty one guy fun. that booked you knows you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, man. And the other guys like, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. And they're like, ah, oh, he's great, dude. He's big. And like, you know, I was like, no, they don't give a yeah, shit. They don't care at all. Yeah. Uh, but doing those shows, corporates, you can still feel it. Where then you sometimes I, you know, I'll do old jokes because they don't know anything, and then you're just like, and you just start murdering like real hard, and you can just feel where people are like, what? I remember I went to Burr's HBO one night stand taping which was one of the first things that he did that really took off and i remember just the crowd when he got done uh you could tell that they were like what Who like just didn't you know like it, it was just like a month like you could they're like i mean it was they when he was done it was still just like so much to everybody's talking and you could see everybody being like what was that like you know like i didn't know that that could even be a thing. They're just thinking, oh, we're going to this taping. Right. Like, it'll be, yeah, I'm sure it's fun and funny. But then to be like, all those people left going like, 
no, I got to know that guy's life. Like if he's near here and, and then you got, they, people have to bring people to him. They just didn't understand that right. this guy was so good. And that was very fun to sit in the crowd because I knew how good he was and just be like, watch all these people. And I'm sure a lot of people didn't know who him, know him at that point, but then watching the other people react to going like, what was that? Dude? Yeah. That's, that's a that's wild crazy. feeling to see. Yeah. But I think you're right though, that it is, it, it's cool to do a, a place where all your fans are. Um, because the challenge is you have to be as strong as you can, which I think makes you a significantly better comic than you were when you are doing rooms where they don't know you. Because I think sometimes we can get lazy where you don't, you know, when you first start touring and you're selling out, I mean, I'm sorry, you're not selling out at all. You know, you're doing, you're selling half a room, you know what I mean? It's a half pack, yeah, less than they half They don't pack. even know, they're they just don't know you. So it just kind of, it almost impedes on your ego sometimes where you're like, well, fuck it. What do I give a shit? I got to go, you know? I gotta yeah. plow through these. But you want to. But I would always want to win those people. Like, oh, you yeah, I would try like, my hardest. Yeah, yeah. And but it does you, check your ego sometimes when oh, it's like yeah, it's when they kind of don't give a fuck and they're there for the chicken wings and it's a bachelorette party and it's like at your best light you still couldn't outshine their kind of discontent because they're just they got it for free or you know like that's the hardest yeah. thing. So then I find myself. I used to find myself at those moments being like. All right, you just gotta. I gotta get through it as best as I can. Yeah, you know, instead of like now, I feel like now I have people paying to see me and fans that I've cultivated. I'm so excited to work hard for them. So I'm, I'm like, I put way, I, I throw my back out. You know, yeah. like the first time I ever opened for Rogan, I realized what it meant to like play a room of those that scale, yeah. and it really meant working. I mean, hard. Like, I, I know, people don't really understand how hard you work on stage when you're doing an hour of material. And you're and you're really pushing it. When you yeah. go into those big rooms, you really have to fucking deliver and stay in a great rhythm and keep them captivated. Because it's not like when you're on your way in and you're meandering through what you've kind of started to. There's no pressure on you. It doesn't matter. Like, yeah, yeah, like when you're opening for you know, yeah, when you're opening for people, like when I opened for Chris Rock on his last tour. See a new on comic? a couple of shows. Young guy. New guy. Yeah. Uh, and he like going out like there's you know I'm going out. I always gave I always like respected that Chris Rock would bring us like he even Jeslin to go before him Hannibal. He'd bring like you know I'm not saying we're this great comp but we're guys that headline on our own. And he would have us open for him because that's tough because like we're coming out and like we're all gonna do really good. We're doing 15 minutes and we're in a room of 3,000. So he would have to go up after us. And I thought it was like that that's cool that he does it. Rogan the fact that he takes you know a lot of you guys and comics that are can sell out places on that sell out places on their own across the country yeah. and when and he wants to hang out with his friends but that's uh that's a big deal because like rogan doesn't have to do that he can bring a younger comic that's going to be fine and then well he's at a level where he could bring nobody he, he could, could just be no, like someone yeah. intro me i'm going to do an hour and 25 yes, minutes just, but just i think it's good in. that he brings he has to make himself follow you have to like go like all right i gotta go bring it because I've got to, like, I know, like, when I take the guys on the road and they do good and they're very funny, it's like, I got to make you forget them. Mm -hmm. Like, because otherwise, you shouldn't, if I get done with an hour, you shouldn't be like, man, that opener was great. Like, that shouldn't be your first thought. <laughs> like, well, I hope it's a thought. I hope it's a thought. No, I'm not saying you want it, but I'm, that's, yes, you want the opener to be great. Yeah. I want the whole show to be great. Yeah. But it's the pressure of, like, if you were headlining, and every comic is like when they when they get done and they're just talking about how funny the opener is. That's not good. That's not a good sign. <laughs> no, as a yeah, that's not a good look. Yeah, you. That means you're doing something wrong. So if you bring strong openers, then that makes you stay on top of your game. Yeah. To then, uh, you're that person's pushing you, and then the people leave going, yeah, you want them to be like the whole show is unbelievable. Like, Who do you bring with you? I got a guy in Nashville, Brian Bates, very funny. Then I I take some New York guys. Who do do we know? Do Gary Veter. Oh, I love uh, Gary. Gary's very funny. Graham K. Gary and I Dana. bombed at a venue together so hard. We did a corporate in Vegas with Alonzo Bowden and Joe McHale. Oh wow! I should say I bombed a lot harder than he did. I mean, he had he did just probably just fine, but yeah. it was it was miserable. Yeah, it was a room full of uh, uh, Maker's Mark uh, is bought by Suntory Whiskey, and it was it all Japanese dudes. It was like yeah. a room, it was a banquet hall in Vegas filled with Japanese men oh, eating at a circular wow. table. Oh, wow. and I just how many people was it three to five it was around yeah. three to five you know what I mean like you couldn't really tell it was it was yeah. a, a massive hundred or yeah three uh, to five hundred yeah three to five hundred in a yeah. in a banquet hall but spread out <clears throat> so bad you yeah. know the tables are like they're yeah. these massive round tables it's like mm -hmm. 
how uh, yeah they they're in suits eating steak they yeah. don't give a fuck about me yeah at all and i remember thinking i was like it's gonna be fine i, I don't give it i've done these kind of things before it's not that big of a yeah. deal could i couldn't get their attention to save my life yeah and they told us to stay clean stay clean stay clean i've told the story before but uh alonzo bowden came out swinging did not stay clean yeah he was like i'm not going out like that he's like y'all yeah. never seen an n-word this big before and they lost it yeah they and, and i was like no oh. I should have just said the N word when I came. Yeah, out, you know? <laughs> that's what everybody. <laughs> then everybody else starts saying that. <laughs> like, every, the like the doors are yeah. yeah, in here. No, but I mean those those they'll, they'll make you they'll make you stronger for sure. Those kind of things. But I I try to take out people that I know are really funny just because I want to show them to the world, which is kind of nice for me. Yeah, yeah, that's the and yeah. it's like well, good. I get to have someone go, dude, amazing, and also yes, I love the yeah. people that you were with. Like that, it's I like to I want to impress them with like we we. We we did this for a reason, not just like you want the whole show to be good. Yeah, it's stupid when somebody does that. I don't. I never understood when someone's like, "Oh God, the first word, that, that was terrible." But you know, I mean, yeah. he, the so and so was good, but like, ugh, it's like, why would you want that? I never understood. Yeah, I, I, people do. It I a would lot. if if I had a uh, opener, which I mean, sometimes the openers can it can be not be great or they bomb or something. But I remember. Uh, when it's sometimes I take something, I would get, I was like, you got to do good, man. Like, I was like, I don't want to follow you bombing. No, it's like, way that's, worse. That's not fun mm -mm. at all. Like, just go do good. So the whole show is then great instead of just going up and like people are, you know, they just hate it. H having to follow someone that does poorly, significantly harder than someone who murders. Yeah. Because... The energy is good. Oh my god, yeah, because at least you get to walk yeah. up to some something positive. You get to ride it, and which is which is so great. That, uh, yeah, I would. I remember being in. Uh, oh, I was gonna say about opens too. What's tough too sometimes though when you, so when you're when people are starting to come see you now too, like they're. I always feel bad because like sometimes like the openers have, can have, they have a tough time because they can to go the out. Maybe waiting for you. The people are very excited to see you. Yeah, and. Uh, so that's hard because I mean I I, th I think everybody knows that there's openers. Mm -hmm. You think like it's not like it's a thing that like what? Where is he? Yeah, yeah. everybody knows that there's an opener there, uh, and then there's also like people can be still be seating and oh, like that's that's tough. you know you try to wait and sometimes you have two shows and you're like we we can't. Yeah, you don't have and a then, choice. So you got to go do 10 minutes and like, you know, it's, it's, you try to make everything else. <coughs> the judges pay them good. And like, so you're, you're like, like, sorry, man, that's how it goes. It's Yeah. And you know what? It is what it is. And uh, I've had to go up when people are still seating. Fuck and yeah. It's like, I do it with Rogan still when they're sometimes when they're seating. We were, uh, I don't know, we were at some, I don't know, casino or something. And they were still seating. And we waited as long as we could. But they're drunk. Yeah. They're rolling in from a casino. So it yeah. was like. You know, you got to go. And a lot of times people do yell out, even when they're so excited and I'm doing well. Yeah. You know, in the middle of a, a, a in the middle of a transition to a joke, someone's like, where's Rogan? You know, like they just, they're just excited. Yeah. They're excited. And you want to go, do you think he's not here? Yeah. Do you think <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to take like all this joke. time? Like, it would be like, really funny for me to just do like an hour and a half and yeah. then we just leave together. And he's like, yeah, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> he's not Rogan never up. shows up. He just doesn't like, Where was out? Rogan? You're like, I don't know. I don't nah, know, man. He didn't show didn't up. make it. How much time do you do? Two, three hours? Yeah. No. Yeah, when I go in front of Joe? Yeah. Um, we usually, If it's Tony and I, we usually do around 30 a piece. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. It, I think, but I guess you are, I mean, you are a headliner, so it's like, and then these people know you. From him, a lot yeah. of them do, yeah, because yeah. his fan base is, I mean, you know, I don't, and they, are, they don't all like you, but you know, the, the yeah. ones that do are dope comedy fans that I've, yeah. I'm, I'm glad I've taken from him that yeah. have been like, oh shit, I like that too. But Tony and I usually do anywhere from 20 to 30, depending on the venue and the show and if we have a second show and all that shit. But Joe loves that shit, dude. He's yeah. the first person to be like, when it's just me and him, he's like, yeah, just fucking stretch. And in my mind, I'm always like, no, just stick to a tight time, stick to a tight time. But he's always like, no, fucking, if I wanted to do 40, he'd be like, do it. Yeah. He just wouldn't fucking care. I just, yeah. His mentality is more like, go out there and just beat the shit out of him. So then when I come out, it's like, I mean, they're just... They're ready. like just juiced and ready to yeah. fucking go. I think that's what he likes. But yeah, I you know, I'm happy to do those shows. They're they're I've doing arenas is is hard to articulate. It's the weirdest thing I've ever experienced in my life. Yeah, being in arenas as a fan of seeing like music, I've never seen an arena comedy show. But being in an arena comedy show, 
very strange. You know, 12,000 yeah. people is very strange. Is it the, the, yeah, I'm trying to think. I've no, I did rock did one in Vancouver, but I want to say it was like seven. Uh, it was, you know, it was like, it was an arena. They, 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 they're ho local hockey arena or something. Right. And, uh, so I just got to do that. I didn't get to do any of his. That's seven. A, that's seven's a one. shitload of people. It's a lot of people. And yeah. uh, like I just did Atlanta and it was 2,800 that I just did. And, but like, that was like the, that was the, around that number, 2,800, 3,000 is when the laugh is different that you hear. That's right. Like anything below that two and below is, it can feel like the laugh is kind of just normal, but then above three, there's a delay. Mm -hmm. And the laugh kind of you you feel it go back, and so the time your timing has just got to be different, in which I'd imagine in front of that many people, it's is, really strange. The timing is a little, it's uh, yeah, you're just hearing it, it's just so weird. Well, the, thank God for for uh, you know those uh, those kick those monitors, the feedback monitors, so you can hear yourself, and it checks me to slow myself yeah. a little bit, so I because I can know my natural rhythm is quick in a club. Yeah. I'm very fast. I'm usually extremely yeah. quick. But when I do those, I like have to be patient because you just learn that you're like, I'm going to step on myself and it's going to fuck up my next joke. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn it, especially in the round. When we were in the round was really strange. Yeah. You're circling. You're like, you're trying to hit all yeah. the corners, but you're like, I, I want to be conscious over where I start a, a, a start a setup and end a punchline. I was, I began to be very conscious as I was learning it to do it yeah because I didn't want to stay stagnant on one side because I was like well they're not going to get any of this for some reason even though you're on these monitors I like around it's cool I've done I'm doing the celebrity theater in Phoenix and I've done it before yeah and uh never on my own but we're doing it on our own and we did it around and uh I think the round is a almost a, I, th I think it's a great I mean they can't see you at all times so that's not great but well they have those mo they have the screens, they have the screens always, and yeah. stuff but like, even if you're the last row, you're always pretty close and you can get so many more people. Yeah. And then like, you're just kind of always like, well, it makes you move more. I don't move. I'm not a big mover. I do a lot of pacing back and forth, but it, so it makes me turn a little bit more and, uh, and try to like, you're having to like, you know, go around and, uh, very funny thing I saw in the round though, cause it's very confusing when you get done. So when you, you say good night in the round, as you know, it's hard to remember where, you're supposed to leave. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. I watched, we did like a benefit show at the round in Phoenix. And the guy's like, all right, good night. And so there's all these ramps that go off. Right. And so he just heads down a ramp. And it's just a locked door. <laughs> and so it's just like, uh, he had to like sit there for a second. And then you just see him walk back up and then walk off the other way. <laughs> and like... <laughs> And because there, he just he he chose the one way where there's like nothing. There's nothing. You yeah. can't even like go through the crowd if you don't. So he just has to come back on the stage, wave again, like, hey everybody, <laughs> and then just walk back off. Because it's like you get disoriented. You yeah, don't know. you don't know where you are. Yeah, there's yeah. not like a huge thing that's like exit here. Yeah. No, that doesn't exist. And so you just have like where you know when you, are you when are you doing celebrity? Uh, Valentine's Day. Ooh, mm -hmm. that's lovely. That's a gift for your wife that she'll never forget, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, I performed, I think, every Valentine's Day. Yeah, I'm about to as well. <laughs> I'm going to be in Vancouver. And she was like, it's a Valentine's Day weekend. I was like, I think it, I guess, unless yeah. they've moved it. I think it's, I yeah. think they have to, you know, my wife's never, you, you just do it after. Like, we, you tend to celebrate whatever, unless it's like Christmas or something, or you tend to do this stuff just days later those are fake holidays i don't i, I yeah. only i believe in the birthday and i believe in christmas with family but outside mm. of that i don't really give a shit about yeah valentine's day doesn't mean any any of these things where they're like fabricated to make you feel bad like mm -hmm. mother's day father's day is like okay i i'm just i'm nice to you all year round i don't know i need yeah. to pick one day to you know but Anyway, I'm tr I'm I do that too. I'll travel on those days because it is what it is. But you know, it's like I got I've got to golf on Mother's Day, the past two Mother's Day. That's a great day to golf. Uh, yeah, you go out there and because no like, I ran it because my wife would go to with her mom mm -hmm. and her and our daughter and her mom, her mom would go and she wanted they do it like a mom's thing, and so I'm like, I mean. Like yeah, one way yeah, you're like all right, like I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess. And I just get to go do. Uh, gotta go do your thing. I gotta do my thing. I'm gonna sit at home by myself. Mother's Day is Nate's day. It's my day. It's really it's about you. Day. Mother's Day has always been about you. 
Yeah, I love it. Yeah, Father's Day is great. U.S. Opens on Father's Day. Yeah, and I always think that's then fun. that's really about you. Yeah, and you sit there and watch the U.S. Open, and like it's a fun, you know, it's a me day. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to be left alone on those days? Uh, no. I usually try to golf. I'll golf like my brother and my dad. Like we will nice. golf in the morning and watch U.S. Open, and then have everybody over. Tell I like us. having people over. I like having like you know let's come to get, the house. Come to the house. Let's all get together. Like yeah. I, I, we, my me and my family are close and. So I, I enjoy when we all get to hang out and uh, do stuff, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's nice. Big, yeah. You're a lucky man to live close to home, man. And uh, I'm jealous. I will say I'm jealous of that. You're uh, you're lucky for that. You get to tour from where you're from. And Are you close to your family? Like, no, uh, yeah, I am close, but yeah. they're, all, you know, they're all in Chicago. Yeah. I don't get to see them. But when I get to get on the road, it's really nice. If I'm ever near Chicago, yeah. I go home, you know? Yeah. I play Madison. I'm playing uh, Minnesota in the new year. I'm going to jet home. It's like, yeah. it's nice to be able to do it because the Midwest has so many gigs, you know, so yeah. many places to just make it a pinpoint. So yeah, I'm doing this tour. Uh, Chicago's easy to go to. It is. I'm doing a tour next year and I'm going to stop by a few times, man. You're, uh, how many dates? Do you have a ton of dates coming up? Uh, we're doing a whole 50 massive, cities. 50? 50 Holy till May. Shit. And then we'll probably do another 50 in the, the f we haven't nailed down the fall yet. But uh, Well, there's only 48 50. cities in the US, so that'll be tough to do. You'll figure it out. Yeah, not 54. Oh, is that now what it that, is? Yeah. Two more, double to twice? Double twice. There's a callback if people yeah. remember it. Oh, um, checked out a lot. You want to see this. <laughs> yeah, they're all sleeping. Yeah, yeah. If you want to see this uh, sexy beast, uh, Nate Bargatze, alive, I highly recommend it. I really don't. You don't need my voucher. He's a phenomenal comedian that I'm sure most everyone has already been aware of. Uh, specials on Netflix. Another one that's going to come out. When? Oh, uh, I probably won't be out till twenty one. I don't. We don't even you're have a film it. It's next not even year. Done. I'm. I'm. My goal is to tape one next year. Yeah, like, you're gonna do another uh, one. Let's be real. So, you're hot saying. as a pistol, kid. Yeah, you yeah. gotta do it. <laughs> Where do they gotta go? Napergetsy.com. Yeah. No, yeah. Nothing funky. I was funny when somebody's like. I have an I am Nate too. I am uh, Nate. Dot com. I did that a long time ago, just because. Uh, so people, hey, like, we we'll have you are doing morning radio, and you can just go go iamnate.com. Oh, that's smart. Uh, yeah, it's just that, but you know, nowadays I think you should be able to. Someone told me today, they he tweeted something at me, and he's like, and then he's like, and just so you know, before I tweeted this, I couldn't remember your name, and I just googled Tennessee comedian, and you came up. That's so that was huge nice. that you're the guy. Yeah, that you're the Tennessee comedian the guy. Tennessee comedian. You have that market can't do that. L.A. comedian. See how that works. See how that goes. Yeah, you know who. It would all be there was someone that when I first started, I remember uh, I looked up New York comedian and he, he was almost like a guy that figured out the website very early. Right. And this is when I first moved to New York in uh, 2004. And if you Googled New York comedian, he would come up. That's insane. And uh, it was, but this was 2004. So it's like, I think before people figured everything out. And he just knew how to direct that. It's like what Dane Cook did with yeah. all that shit. Dane Cook did little, like learned how to drive traffic from MySpace. Yeah, he was really he like he he learned how to do all that shit. He like beat the game and was like every search on MySpace for comedian would go right to him. He yeah. was like the number one comedian on MySpace. I never had any of that ingenuity. I still don't. I'm so so dumb with that stuff. I'm so yeah. bad. Like, uh, yeah, it's a whole it's a whole process, but. Go to napargetsy.com. Go see this dude. He, um, you're you're a funny dude, man. I'm very I'm very happy for your success. Yeah, I wanted to thank continue. You, you as well. I think you're a big fan of you. My sister's not because the one show. She one show, to. yeah. His sister, Nate, she, my sister went to a show and I didn't do that well in Nashville. It was my worst show. <laughs> she said it was great. I don't. But that was very funny that you were like that was the worst one. It really was. Yeah. It, you, you, but you know, you know when some. I know. You, you know mean. sometimes when yeah. somebody goes, I I loved it, and you're like, yeah. I didn't enjoy almost any of it. I mean, yeah, not that yeah. I didn't do what or they didn't it's not like oh i didn't get any laughs it was like it was fine it was just for your your, your bur, per internal barometer of comedy i was like this isn't as good as i wanted it to go you can tell sometimes when they leave you're like i bet they had fun oh but sure. I, I bet they will say they would never know but i did not give my best performance. yeah i hate that but you can but you can tell but you get you, you realize that's why i always think you got to learn how to murder when you first start like you gotta really learn what like telling a joke that's like uncontrollably laughter sounds like yes because if you don't know what that sounds like you're never chasing that sound and so once you learn what it sounds like and you are always chasing that sound that's the best comics are chasing that sound oh, forever. and you see a lot of comics sometimes that have never i remember one guy one time uh he went up and it was terrible and then i was <laughs> say about what, to say what it was huh no i don't remember it was a, this was in new york first starting okay i just remember the uh Gary Peter. 
Uh, it was Gary Vader. <laughs> yeah. uh, I remember, uh, I was, you know, we're doing a bar show, so it was like whatever. But he came off, and I was about to say, like, man, this crowd, you know, who cares? This crowd stinks. Everybody's bombing. And uh, right before I could say it, he's like, that was great. And I was like, oh, this guy's never done good. Because yeah. he <laughs> thinks that's great. Because yeah. you can train yourself. To, think to like be like if you if you every time you go up you only get this level of sound what you hear on stage is different than what you can hear other people do yeah so to him he's like yeah it's great and you're like oh i get maybe it is probably great to you but you want to go like but it's not great not man. Great like all. you need to realize that's <laughs> not great it's not great yeah you should be chasing a it's, louder laugh it's just as painful when someone who does very poorly all the time when you first start out mm. and you get off and you don't mention anything and then they're like, I had fun. I had fun. And you're like, no, don't. Yeah, you're like, I know you didn't have fun. Man. You didn't. There's no way. <laughs> Please don't tell me that's your, your fun. Your fun's terrible. It's a bad fun. Yeah, you, you have, have a, a sad, bad. sad fun. Yeah, like you're gonna be like, you enjoy like cutting yourself. You're like, that's fun when you that's cut yourself. Fun. It. The, yeah, the blood is the neat. blood's neat. And you're like, oh man, you got to get on a roller coaster or something. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta get some adventure in your yeah. life. Um, ladies and gents, uh, we're tying out. We're off soon. I'm uh. I'm done for the year, man. This is it for me. I'm going to hang out until the new year. Go to andrewsantino.com. I'm going to I'm be in bl- Denver. I'm the end of 2019? Huh? I'm the end of 2019? You are, well, I think we have one. We might have one more. I don't know. I think you might be the last you one. You just lying to everybody then? No. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I got some surprises in store for some oh. of these people. But um, yeah, go to andrewsantino.com for tickets. Go to natebargetzi.com. We'll put the description in the link below so you can go um this dude's incredible i'm I'm happy that you came and i wish you uh yeah, continued success thank you um say hi to your sister in nashville and tell her i said oh. sorry um yeah, i need to get the money back that's oh, what she wants okay i have the, i think the tickets the were refund i think there were 17 bucks or 16 <laughs> yeah. bucks yes yeah, yeah 16 17 16 17 Just buy bucks. one get one free yeah <laughs> there were two for one <laughs> um do me a favor this is how we end the episode uh look into the camera and say either a either a word or a phrase of your choosing go ahead dead gummit in here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me five dollars for the whiskey, seventy-five dollars for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger, I like gingers.